our next button here is our rubric form button. You can see I have a rubric loaded. I use my persuasive paper rubric that I added. And you have the ability, let me bring this down a little bit as an instructor, to use this little scroll uh, slider here to choose what you think they deserved for these areas of your rubric. If you click apply to grade, once you've made those changes, you'll see this 88 change to a 53. You can always come back and change it to a 55 if you think they deserved a little more, but that's how easy it is to use these sliders in this rubric. You'll also notice these little buttons here. These are the when I added criterion to my comments. So if I click on that little button, it lets me know what comments I had added, how many I added, and which ones I added. So it keeps a nice tally for you as you're deciding what grade they deserve. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was the ability, if you don't like using the sliders, is the ability to open up in a full size view your rubric. So if I click on this little icon here with the arrows, it's going to open up my rubric in a larger screen. Again, it has my criterion that I've added, but I can also now just click on the scores that I think they deserve and I can click apply to grade. And I think I had a 55 before. I'm gonna click apply to grade and now I have a 93. So you can scroll and you can slide or you can click on these little arrows and open up in a full size view. <clears throat> the other item I'd like to show you before we jump down to the similarity layer is this little gear here. Again, in the classic view, it was a wrench. Now it is a gear. If we open that up, you can see here is our rubric, my persuasive paper rubric. I can scroll down and I can see how it works. But if I click on this little menu button up here in the top left, <clears throat> you can see it gives me the ability to create a brand new rubric. So I can start from scratch, I can create my own criterion, fill in all of these boxes, and create my own new rubric. I can also create a grading form. For those that you may not be avail are aware of what a grading form is, it's kind of a toned down rubric. So down here I have a grading form. When I click on that, this is what the grading form is some simple criteria, you can add a description, and then when you're looking at it from and, and grading a student's paper, it's just the ability to add comments to a, a criteria area. Similar to a rubric, um, but not a substantial. Uh, I'm gonna come back to my persuasive paper. Click on this menu again. Now, you also have the ability to upload a rubric or grading form. So maybe you have a colleague that is using a rubric that you really like, they can send it to you and you can upload it. One thing to keep in mind is that currently, and we're working on this to allow different file types, but currently we allow you to import in the .rbc format or as an Excel <clears throat> format. Keep in mind the .rbc, we have, if you go to turnitin.com, you can access our rubric library. And inside that rubric library, I think we have you know, 50 to 60 rubrics that you can use and download. And when you download them, they're in the .rbc format. So you would then use those to load into here. If you use Excel, you can use Excel, but you'll have to use our Excel template in order to be able to load it into uh, your course here. So I clicked on upload. You can see what it accepts. .rbc, XLS, XLSS, and here's this rubric example. So if you click on this and open it up, <clears throat> it's gonna give you a rubric in an Excel sheet that you can then manipulate and change to your liking, then save it and submit it. Um, let me see if that opened up, here we go. So here's our example. So this is the format it needs to be able to read your Excel rubric. So if you download this template, you can copy and paste everything you'd like into it, and then you can load it. But if it's not in this format, it's going to come out and be a problem. So just keep that in mind, that you just want to make sure that you use the .rbc format, which is from our rubric library, or use an Excel sheet that you have copy and pasted into our rubric example as a template to use. And then once you've done that, you can browse for those files and you can load them in. 